everybody, Josh Byerly here inside Mission Control Houston. I'm joined by my friend Liz Warren, who is part of the International Space Station Program Science Office. Liz uh, is here because all this week and really all this month, again, we've been talking about the anniversaries of Valentina Tereshkova, which has been 50 years, and Sally Ryan, which has been uh, 30 years since those two uh, landmark uh, flights uh, took place. But Liz, let's talk about science for a little bit. First of all, let's talk about your, your background. I've got it, 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 I have to write it down over here. So, so you grew up in San Francisco, right? Yes, I did. You have a BS degree in molecular, cellular, and integrative physiology. Did I say that right? You did. And a, doctor, a doctoral <laughs> degree in physiology, all from UC Davis, so you're a California girl. So let's talk I about, am. whenever you were going to school, junior high school, like when did you get involved in science? When did you sort of kind of get the bug and, and how'd that happen? I think I was born with an insatiable curiosity. I think I always knew I was going to be a scientist because of that. My parents and my family encouraged me and fostered my interests. Yeah. And I had some pretty great science teachers as well. In seventh grade uh, in California growing up, I had a great science teacher, at Mrs. PC, and then in high school, Miss, Miss Brumbaugh at Tamil Pius High School. And then at UC Davis, I had a really wonderful science teacher that really challenged me and taught me how, how fun science can be, uh, Barbara Horwitz at UC Davis. So did you, you spent your entire time in California? I did, and I arrived in Houston after getting my PhD uh, about nine years ago. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about this, about this photo that we're looking at right now. You have a space shuttle on the back of your graduation gown. Did, how did that happen? <laughs> well, well uh, I knew where I was going. There, there was no doubt in my mind that I was going to be uh, working at NASA one day. And I think it's in part because of the achievements of Sally Ride and Valentina Tereshkova really blazing the trail. There was no doubt in my mind, just because I was a woman, that I'd be able to achieve my dreams as well. So they sort of inspired you to kind of go into it. And whenever you, Absolutely. you know, I'm sure you talked to a lot of high school and, and junior high kids whenever you're out there. And, and, and uh, you know, the ones that are interested in science, how do you tell them what to figure out what they want to do? We talked to Camilla Lane yesterday about the same sort of thing. Like, how do they even know what they want to go into? Well, careers in STEM and particularly in science uh, are extremely rewarding, primarily because you're always learning something new. And that makes for an exciting career, uh, always changing. And so to students, I say, um, stick with it. Sometimes careers or sometimes education can be a little bit challenging, um, but that just makes it more fun. Yeah. And the number of doors that are open to you when you have uh, skills in science, technology, engineering, and, and math are really limitless. So you've done a lot of work here at NASA in terms of sort of how the human body reacts to being in space. Talk a little yes. bit about that. Well, uh, when we watch uh, people in zero gravity, uh, it sure looks like a lot of fun, but uh, microgravity- That's you running on the treadmill there, right? It is, that's me running on uh, NASA's C9 aircraft, which allows 20 to 30 seconds of microgravity at a time. It flies the vomit in a, comet. It, well, yes, it's <laughs> also known as the vomit comet. And uh, well, I tell students that um, these careers are really exciting and really fun. And my interest in microgravity um, really stems from the fact that the human body is fascinating on its own. But when we go to microgravity, a lot of the changes that occur are, are really not so good for us. Our bodies decondition pretty rapidly without gravity. Yeah. And one of uh, my favorite experiments on the International Space Station is actually an experiment called integrated cardiovascular. And in essence, it studies the way that the heart deconditions during long duration space flight. And um, I helped implement that experiment actually just down the hall here in Mission Control, working with, working with the folks in the Payload Operations Integration Center um, as a scientist here at NASA. And one of my favorite parts of that experiment was uh, uh, operating an ultrasound device, which mm -hmm. the astronauts used on orbit to take pictures of their heart so we could actually see the changes that were occurring. That's interesting. You know, we talk about the ultrasound a little bit because it, it's, uh, uh, you know, one of the things I learned whenever I came here was that, you know, size and weight hugely matter when we take things up. And, and one thing the space station is doing is, is helping to sort of miniaturize, you know, the size of MRIs and, and, and ultrasounds and things such as that. Like, talk, talk a little bit about that. So the ultrasound device that is currently on orbit is actually a commercial off-the-shelf item that is very small, pretty much no larger than a laptop. Yeah. And um, we took that up uh, on orbit with some slight modifications to make it, uh, make it usable in space. But uh, technologies um, have been miniaturized largely because of uh, NASA technology and, and the need to have smaller uh, 
technologies and, and, and machinery, um, thanks to NASA spinoffs, essentially. So a final question, whenever you take a look at these anniversaries of Tereshkova and, and Ride, I mean, you know, you look around at, um, you know, the Space Station Science team itself, you take a look at all these flight controllers in this room, I mean, this is a very diverse, uh, you know, people from all walks of life all over the world and on all kinds of education backgrounds, you know, is that, uh, does that excite you or, or is it just sort of normal now? You know, I think it's actually pretty normal yeah. now. Um, we do have a very diverse team uh, here at NASA in particular. Uh, there are women astronauts, women flight controllers, women flight directors, our center director is a woman. Mm -hmm. um, we have a woman up on the International Space Station right now, and these things don't make headlines. I think it's just expected now. The new astronaut class of 2013 is half women. Yeah. And while that did make some headlines because it was the first time that it happened, it really wasn't that surprising. Right. That is more indicative of the number of applicants that are women and, and the most qualified people are picked. So I think it says a lot. Well, it's always good to talk to you. I appreciate you coming over here and, and spending some time here on the air with us. Thank you. Of course, if you'd like to learn more about the space station, all the different science experiments that the crew is currently working on, you can take a look at it by expedition or by discipline. Just log on to the NASA website at www nasa.gov slash station. Just look on the left-hand side of the page. You'll see research and technology there and see all kinds of information there about what, uh, the, what the crew is working on. So thanks again, Liz. Thank you.